All right, everyone, welcome to part two of our spring 2018 exam two, um, <clears throat> our, our review here. Um, so last where we left off, we got to problem 13 here, where we were looking at the function x squared y minus 3xy plus xy squared. And here, um, we were taking a look at a few of the different critical points, starting with 0, 0. Um, so we took the gradient just to make sure that they were critical points, and then we looked at the second derivatives to classify the critical points. So let's continue doing this for number 14 here. Um, so let's see. So which of the following best describes the function at the point negative 3, 0? All right, well, if I take that and put it into the gradient to make sure it's a critical point, um, all of these have a y in them, right? So if I put y equals 0 in there, we will get 0 for the x component of the gradient. Um, but on the other hand, if we put negative 3 into here, we're going to have 9 plus 9 plus 0. So that's going to end up giving us 18 and not 0. Hence, this one's not actually going to be a critical point. And then if we look at the final example here, uh, we have the point 1, 1. If we plug that into our gradient, we have 2 minus 3 plus 1 is 0, and 1 minus 3 plus 2 is also 0. All right, so we know that's at least a critical point. And then what we do is we plug 1, 1 into our d value, or fxx, fyy minus fxy squared. When we do that, we get 4 for the first term, and then we have 2 minus 3 plus 2 which is 1. So we have 4 minus 1 is 3, which is greater than 0, meaning that this is going to be either a local min or a local max, depending on the sign of our second derivative. Now, the sign of either of our pure partial derivatives is going to be 2, or sorry, it's going to be positive because it's 2, so that means we're going to have a local minimum at this, since we have a positive second derivative. All right, so that takes care of all of those questions here. And then let's move on to number 16, the last multiple choice. Suppose that f of x, y is defined on a region D containing the point AB. Which of the following must be true? If f has a horizontal tangent plane in AB, then fx at AB is 0 and fy at AB is 0. All right, so right away, actually, we found our true statement. Because remember, the definition of the tangent plane is this. We have z minus f of a, b is fx times x minus a plus fy times y minus b. So if we want to be horizontal, we just want z equals something, we need both of these to be zero. So that means we're going to have a true statement here. Now if we were on the exam, we would just call it a day here, but let's go over these other statements and see why they're false. Um, so if both of the partial derivatives exist, then f is differentiable at a, b. Now we saw an explicit example in class where this didn't end up being true. So we were able to get both of our partial derivatives, but then the function wasn't even continuous, let alone differentiable at the point. So we've seen a counterexample to this in class. Um, f, x, y at a, b is the same as f, y, x. Now you might be tempted to say, oh yeah, well that's, that's going to be true, but remember, this is only true if these functions are continuous. And they didn't say anything about that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be true. Um, if fx at a, b is 0 and fy at a, b is 0, then f has a local maximum or minimum at a, b. And while that is a possibility, we could also end up having a saddle point there as well. So this doesn't cover all of the possibilities. It doesn't need to be one of these two. All right, and then the last statement here. If both fx and fy exist, then f is continuous at ab. And in the same counterexample we had up here, um, we saw that we had partial derivatives, and they both existed, but we didn't even have a continuous function because we took the limit in two different ways for that, and we ended up not getting the same value. So that's going to be false as well. All right. Next, let's move on to the free response part of the exam. Just a moment, let me find where that is.
Hmm. Okay, well I have two here right now. I'm just going to go ahead and do two first. And I'll see what I can do about finding number one. All right, so use the method of Lagrange multipliers to find the minimum value of this function on this plane right here. And this is going to be our constraint function. All right, so let's see here. The method of Lagrange multipliers has us equate the gradient of f to lambda times the gradient of g. So the gradient of f will be 4x, 2y, and 4z. And that needs to equal lambda times the gradient of g, which is going to be, um, let's see here, 1, negative 1, and 3. All right, so that ends up giving us a few equations here. We have 4x is lambda. We have 2y is negative lambda. We have 4z is going to be 3 lambda. And we also have the constraint equation. x minus y plus 3z is 6. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve all of these for x, y, and z and then substitute them into the constraint. So x is lambda over 4. Um, y, wait, this should just be a negative lambda. What am I doing? Okay, y is going to be negative lambda over 2, and z will be 3 lambda over 4. So with all of this information, let's go ahead and put this into here. So we have lambda over 4 plus lambda over 2, because we're subtracting a negative, and then plus 9 lambda over 4 has got to be 6. All right, so let's add up our fourths here. We have 1 fourth, 9 fourths, and 2 fourths, giving us 12 fourths, or 3 lambda, meaning that lambda is going to end up being 2. All right, so this gives us our x, y, and z values. This means that x will be 1 half, y will be negative 1, and z will be 3 halves right here. So those are going to be our x, y, and z values, which we'll put here. All right, and then what's the minimum value that we can have? Well, we take these and we put them into our function here. So f of 1 half, negative 1, 3 halves is going to be 2 times 1 half squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 times 3 halves squared. All right, so this is 1 half plus 1, um, let's see, plus 3 halves. All right, so this ends up giving us 3, if I'm not mistaken. So we come down here and our minimum value is 3. All right, let me pause the recording for a moment and see if I can find another page. All right, I found the other page. It was actually just on the back of problem 16. I thought that was a blank on the back there. So anyways, let's go ahead and finish this up. So number one here, consider the function f of xy is root 2x plus y. Find the gradient at the point 1, 2. All right, well, let's see. The gradient in general will be the x derivative of this. So 1 over 2, root 2x plus y, and then times the derivative of the inside, or the x derivative, which is just 2. So we'll have those cancel. Then we're going to do the y derivative of this. So we have 1 over 2, and then the square root of 2x plus y. And then we do the y derivative of the inside, but that's just 1. All right. And then now we need to plug in the point 1, 2. So that's going to give us our gradient as, um, let's see, 1 over 2 plus 2. So it's going to be 1 half if we take the square root. And then over here, we're going to have 1 over 2 times root 2 plus 2. So that will end up giving us 1 fourth. So this will be the value of our gradient. All right. Next, find an equation of the tangent plane to the surface z equals f of x, y at the point 1, 2. Well, we actually already have most of the information for that. 
the tangent plane equation is z minus f of ab is partial f partial x at ab times x minus a plus the y derivative at ab times y minus b. All right, so the x derivative at ab, well, that's our x component of our gradient, will be 1 half, and then we do x minus 1, and then the y component here will be 1 fourth, and then we have y minus 2, and then over here we have z minus f of ab. Well, what's f of ab equal to? If we plug 1 here and 2 here, we're going to end up getting 2 for that. So this is going to be the equation of our tangent plane right there. All right, and then finally we want to use part b to approximate the function value f of 0.98 and then f of 2.08. So remember, the tangent plane is what we use for linear approximations. So let's go ahead and use that now. So z is 2 plus 1 half times x minus 1 plus 1 quarter times y minus 2. All right, so let's plug in those points. So let's see, we have 2 plus 1 half, and then we have 0 0.98 minus 1. Meanwhile, over here we have a quarter, and then we have 2.08 minus 2. So let's see what we get out of this. This is going to be negative 0.2, but then with the 1 half we'll have um, negative 0 0.01. And then over here, this will be 0 0.08, but then divided by 4 will be plus 0 0.02. So if we combine all these together, we end up getting 2.01. And that's going to end up being our approximation. All right, and that was the rest of the exam here. So um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that, and I wish you guys all the best of luck on the upcoming exam.